Very good, old boy. Now would you care for a cup of tea? Uh, no, thank you. Could I get a coffee instead? Daddy, he's American. What good is that? This company was founded by old Etonians and is staffed by the most appropriate men from Oxford. With the odd Durham lad thrown in. Fair enough. Rhodesia, will you bring a cup of coffee for John? John, now tell me, what do you think of our company's current position, our situation regarding expansion and development? Yeah, well, uh, I've devised a strategy to get this company back on track. Uh, but the company has actually not responded to the changing market forces and as a result has been left behind. I've been thinking the same sort of thing myself. Well, I suppose the staff has become rather diluted with lorry loads of minor public school riffraff. Which seem to have crept their way in. And I imagine the old boys have resented that and as a result productivity has suffered severely. I mean, it does make sense, Daddy. Ah, Rhodesia, take your time, will you? Would you like anything else? Thank you, Rhodesia. That will be all for now. Uh, sorry, have I missed something? Is her name actually Rhodesia? Is whose name Rhodesia? The woman who just brought me the copy. Who cares? Remind me later to share some stories with you from my grandfather from the British Empire's army in the colonies. Those were the days, I tell you. Uh, her name is Laura. Very well. Her name is Laura. Anyway, it shouldn't be Rhodesia anymore, should it? It should be Zimbabwe, now they've taken over. Bloody disgrace what they've done to the bloody place since we've left. Mm. Disgrace. We should have bombed them into submission while we had the chance. Do carry on, John. The new candidate for my operations team is waiting outside right now. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be my nephew James, perfect for the job. Great at finance, accounting and our sort of chap. Good pedigree. No, Daddy, he doesn't need somebody in accounts. He can do the accounting himself. I suppose James could keep an eye on John just to check he's not pilfering the odd custard cream from the old biscuit tin. <laughs> you know what these Jews are like. Uh, what? Uh, I'm not Jewish. You're not? But you've got a rather big... And you're from Jew York. <laughs> I bet you live north of the river, don't you? <laughs> And I'd put money on you being circumcised. He's American, of course he's circumcised. <laughs> but actually he's a bit big, to be honest, to be a Jew. Uh, uh, look, uh, I'm a Christian from Boston, living in the East End. Oh. Oh. I've never been further east than Liverpool Street Station myself. Look, let's call in the candidate. Please, call Laura. Uh, Rhodesia, and Zimbabwe. Um, will you show him in, please? Ah, Zimbabwe. What have you done with the candidate? Have you lost him? Laura is the candidate, okay? She has a first in her degree in economics. She graduated in the top 10% of her MBA class. She speaks fluent Arabic, fluent French. Uh, quite frankly, she's the most underutilized, underappreciated employee at this company. And I want her on my team. John, have you lost your marbles? I, I can see her value. I mean, come on, Zimbabwe. Give us a kiss. John, we need to talk about this alone. This isn't America. You've elected your president. This is England. We've accomplished so much using our kind of people. Who do you think you are to tell us what to do? Uh, gentlemen, look, it, it's your company. You can do with it whatever you like. However, I'm telling you right now, if you do not adapt to the changing market forces, this company will not exist in five years. The old boy's way of doing business is over. Laura is the future of this company. Learned in Arabic. It could be very useful. Top 10% of your MBA class. I don't suppose you were at Oxford, were you? Actually not Oxford, but the Church Business School at Cambridge. I specialise in finance and international business. It, it actually seems that not everybody in this room graduated from Oxbridge. Uh, George, I, I took a look at your employee file, and it seems that you graduated from Oxford Polytechnic, not Oxford proper. Uh, I can assure you that Laura graduated from the real Cambridge University, not Cambridge Polytechnic. Uh, it was actually Oxford Brooks, which happens to be one of the best universities. Even my father couldn't get me into the real Oxford. No, I couldn't. 
George has been the biggest shame to our family since Burgoyne in Saratoga in 1777. John, just one question. If we do take Laura on, who gets to make the tea? This company was founded on by older, sorry. I've been rather thinking about that. Mind me. Uh, essentially, the company has failed to adapt to the changes uh, in the growing workforce, and I fucked that up. Rhodesia, will you bring a cup of coffee for John? I imagine the old boy would resent that. And productive, productive. This company was founded by Old Etonians and is staffed by the most appropriate men from Oxford. Bye. Uh, essentially, I've devised a new strategy to get this company back on track. Bye. I've bombed them into submission and we had a chance. Uh, so, do carry on, John. Yeah, uh, life. He's American, of course he's circumcised. <laughs> and I can't think what I'm going to say next. We're in England now. We've done things the traditional way. We've built our reputation on that kind of thing. And I'm waffling unbelievably and I can't believe yeah, I'm doing that. Look, I, I'm a Christian from Boston. Okay, let's... Oh, shit. <laughs> this is England. We've accomplished so much with the kind of people we have, our kind of people. Who do you think you are? I know, fuck that. We're getting nearer the script or further from it. It's going to be quite good by tomorrow. <laughs>